In this video, we will review the performance of the most popular European PTP lending platforms. We will also be covering some of the latest events that might impact the return of your own portfolio. So if the safety of your investment is important to you, you should watch until the end as there is a lot to be covered today. As always, remember that this video is no investment advice, PTP lending is risky and you might lose your money. In this table, you can see that Mintos, Estate Guru and Pibre continue to manage the largest portfolios. Mintos managed to slightly decrease the amount of funds in recovery from its own book. However, at the current pace, it might take another 5-7 to seven years to recover the funds from problematic lenders. At the time of recording, the platform has over 138 million of funds in recovery, of which roughly 7 million are in pending payments. It seems like Mintos continues to focus on other products such as bonds and ETFs, so it's hard to estimate whether the platform actually prioritizes recovering funds from defaulted loans. Estate Guru is another platform with a significant amount of funds in recovery. While Estate Guru reported a recovery of 1.4 million euro in March, increasing the recoveries to 2 million in the first quarters of 2024, it is still just 5% from the expected 38 million which the platform aims to recover this year. Estate Guru continues to highlight its portfolio from 2023 with a default rate of just 3.4%. Unfortunately, this won't make the other 132 million euro in recovery go away. When the platform manages to recover funds monthly, the defaulted loan amount grows faster as Estate Guru's recoveries. As the platform starts to sell off a larger portion of the portfolio, we won't likely see huge progress in recoveries anytime soon. Unlike Mintos and Estate Guru, Pibri continues recovering from its portfolio in Ukraine. The platform has already repaid over 47 million euro of war affected loans. The amount of funds in recovery continues to decrease every month. If the lenders don't face any black swan events, investors will likely receive all the principal from the loans in Ukraine within the next 12 months. Last month, the platform also shared information about the regulatory changes in Kazakhstan and its plan to onboard another factoring company that funds business loans in the country. Pibri also plans to increase loan volumes from Spain, Romania, Mexico and South Africa in the upcoming months. The best performing platforms in May are Robocush, Esketit, Inrento, Crowdbeer and Fintown. Those platforms have no funds in recovery, meaning the lending portfolios perform as expected. Robocash continues to perform well, slightly increasing its loan volumes. While the portfolio amount on Esketit decreased over the last month, the CEO told me that Avafin would expand its exposure on the platform from 15 million to 20 million euro this year. Due to bureaucratic challenges with Utopia, the loan volumes have been lower than expected. Esketit has also released the financial report from its business partner Money for Finance in Jordan, which announced the decrease in interest rates from May. Inento and Crowdpeer continue to grow. Fintown has opened its rental project in Carlin for the public. Soon you will be able to book your stay on Booking.com. Investors who wish to earn rental yield by investing in this specific project can expect to get between 8 and 12% interest per year with monthly payouts. The platform also introduced a new development project that offers a higher interest rate and an early bird deal that gives investors an additional 1% annual interest for future investments in the rental project. The Inca Marketplace increased its portfolio last month and announced a new banking partner. If you regularly invest on the platform, you should check the new deposit options. Income currently lists loans with a long term between 5 and 9 years. This is actually quite rare in the industry and since the platform is still not profitable, investors should ask themselves whether it's realistic to expect that the platform or lender who issued the loans will still be operating in 5 to 9 years when the loan matures. That's definitely something to think about. Capitalia is also performing quite well compared to some other platforms in the industry. The company has recently updated its statistics page, showing the net return of larger investors. Additionally, Capitalia introduced new e-wallets in cooperation with Lemonway, hence you don't need to fund loans directly anymore, but you can top up your wallet and set up an auto-invest. Lambda increased its portfolio amount last month while slightly increasing the default rate. At the time of reporting, Twino's statistics don't include data from April yet. The platform announced that it is leaving the Asian markets where it operated in a joint venture with VIA SMS Group. According to Twino, the exit from Vietnam and the Philippines is due to a significant shift in regulators' attitudes towards the industry, which has led to a growing number of repressive measures against companies providing lending services. We warned investors about the situation in Vietnam already in December of last year, yet Twino continued funding its portfolio for another 5 months 
before it decided to suspend new long listings. This gives you a good idea about how slow Twino is in evaluating the risks in various countries. Currently, it seems like Twino will continue offering Polish loans to its investors. Those loans come with significant regulatory risk as consumer loans in Poland cannot be funded by retail investors anymore. Yet Twino is using a workaround claiming it doesn't affect their product as they issue the loans via a credit card. This type of workaround might not work forever and as soon as the regulator cracks down on it, investors' funds will be at risk. Debitum has not updated its statistics last month, but the platform released its audited financial report, which includes additional information about its current state and plans for this year. The platform reported a loss of 358,000 euro last year. According to the auditor, some information in the management report is maturely inconsistent. The claims on their statistics page are also inconsistent. The platform makes it look like all the Ukrainian loans have been repaid which is not correct. To our knowledge, over 1.7 million euro are still stuck in Ukraine. It is very optimistic to expect those funds to be returned to investors after the war is over. What's also optimistic are Debitum's plans to double the portfolio amount and break even this year. Unfortunately, the report doesn't mention how the new management purchased the platform and released itself from the responsibility toward the initial backers of Debitum Network, which gave the platform millions to fund its development and operations for several years. The platform has never returned any funds to its initial backers. It's still mind-blowing that the regulator in Latvia has given Debitum a license to operate as an investment firm without questioning their funding practices. What can also be questioned is the risk management of heavy finance. The platform reports payment delays of more than 90 days for loans worth more than 9 million euros. According to Heavy Finance, the increase in delinquencies is seasonal and expected to decrease in May and June when farmers receive part of their yearly subsidies. Investors interested in this platform should certainly pay attention to the statistical information representing the portfolio quality segmented by risk categories and countries. While the portfolio quality of Heavy Finance isn't ideal, it's not as bad as that of WeInvest24. The CEO has recently published a video that revealed more issues related to loans from the Baltics. So outside of legal battles in Moldova and the mess in Spain, there are more issues to be aware of. It looks like there are not many employees left at Reinvest24 as nobody has the time to process withdrawals of investors who wish to exit their available funds. Not allowing investors to withdraw available funds is as bad as it gets. But what's even more worrying is that the CEO has not explained how the platform can afford the legal costs to recover the problematic loans. Since the Reinvest24 is not regulated and cannot generate revenue, it's questionable how long they can pay for lawyers who work on recoveries. If you want to watch the video yourself, check your inbox for the link as Reinvest24 has not shared it publicly. What's also not public is the performance-oriented information on the following platforms. And the market has not updated its statistics, which is nothing really new, as they are likely busy promoting their cashback bonuses and announcing new loan listings from lenders who had huge payment issues on other platforms. Last month, Bolster has released a page that provides updates on the problematic lending portfolios. At first, it looks like there are just a few issues, but then you realize you must use the filter to reveal all the problems. Unfortunately, the platform doesn't reveal how much of investors' funds are locked in defaulted loans. However, looking at their performance table, one can assume that it's a significant amount. Bolster is, however, not the only platform that isn't transparent about its outstanding portfolio amount. The same goes also for Via Invest. This regulated platform clearly communicates that its products are classified as medium to high risk. At the same time, it couldn't care less about informing investors of their outstanding portfolio amount and giving them insights into their portfolio performance. On the bright side, there is something positive to report about Via Invest. Credit lights from 2021 that have been strategically extended for the past few years will be fully repaid by the end of the next month. The platform shared that it had already repaid about 60% of the affected credit lines. So those have been the recent highlights from the industry. As you can see, there are plenty of risks to consider when investing in loans. And it's up to you to do your own research and monitor the latest events. You can use PDP Empower to learn more about various platforms, recently updated many reviews to reflect the industry's current environment. If you found this very helpful, do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future updates. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.